You're faced with a situation that's rapidly turning violent. You still want to de-escalate, though. What do you do? Hey, what's up? I'm Ken. This is Kenfu TV, and each week I release videos on the martial arts, philosophy, technique, training, that sort of thing. If that's the kind of thing you're into, be sure to subscribe, hit that bell so you know when new videos are coming out. And if this video has value for you, be sure to like it and share it and get it out there. But today we're talking de-escalation. A good friend of mine and I were talking at the dojo after training the other day. He works in law enforcement, and we started talking about de-escalating threats. That doesn't always look like we think it might. The conversation itself was brief. Uh, we didn't have a lot of time. And that was kind of a bummer, but we, we did get a chance to talk about a thing that had happened recently where the situation could have turned bad and he was able to avoid that based on how he reacted to that situation. And we talked about the ideas that kind of encompass what those options look like. There's a lot of different things when it comes to de-escalation, when it comes to avoiding a fight, and when it comes to handling and facing violence. If you work in a protection field, security, bouncer, law enforcement, military, the options to just leave are kind of out the window. So we as civilians get a, a better shake when it comes to that, because if we decide there's an opportunity to just leave, we can do that. And we're not putting other people at risk and we're not doing our job improperly. But that doesn't mean that we won't end up in situations where leaving is not an option. And in that way, we're falling into the same, the same situation that law enforcement and military have, which is, I need to resolve this, period. It needs to be resolved. But ideally we do so non-violently. We want to not meet violence with violence if we can avoid it. It really kind of breaks down to two ways. There's many, but today I want to talk about two. Two ways that that can go. To quote someone else on this topic, and if you recognize the quote, then drop it in the comments who I'm talking about and what book this is from, but the idea of posturing and submitting. So one of the options is to, is to de-escalate by de-escalating yourself submitting, right? Becoming smaller, becoming less of a target and, and deflating their argument by making it not as effective for what they were trying to accomplish by getting a rise out of you. And that doesn't mean becoming meek, it just means you might just shake it off. You might say, appreciate that, but you know, we still need to do this. I want to go home. You want to go home, whatever. And you can kind of break that down and not meet their abuse with abuse of your own. Sometimes that's not the best option though. Sometimes you meet violence with violence and that can even be verbal violence. There are times when taking the, the route of submission is only gonna make the situation worse. In which case, actually, instead of de-escalating your, your own position, you escalate your own position. You, you bring, you turn up the volume, you crank it to 11 and you get more animated, you get louder, you throw curse words, things like that. I'm sure a lot of you can can recognize situations where you've seen this happen, either in person or on the internet or whatever, where somebody did that thing, raised up and they're cursing and turning the air blue and they're, and they're going after each other really loud. And that is another type of de-escalation. And that was the one that we wanted to talk about. That was the one that, that he brought to me and specifically was like, hey man, you know, we should, we should look at this and we should talk about it. And maybe you should consider talking about it on your show because this is a real thing. There's been studies on it and Sometimes it is exactly what's needed. The idea behind it is that if I raise my level so far to where it's kind of scary to you, even just, just adding a lot of expletives and things like that, and I'm not encouraging you, and a lot of different people watch this channel, I'm not encouraging you to go brush up on all your expletives and slurs and everything else you got so that you can run out and do this thing. But I want you to understand that when that happens, it's a different situation. It's a, it's reacted to differently mentally, it can put you in a place of fear. It can put you in a place of realizing that this person is quite possibly more serious than I am. I wanted to puff up and create this situation. This person is puffing up and coming back at me, only they're actually willing to do it when I really wasn't. I just wanted to X, Y, or Z. I just wanted to cause a problem. I just wanted to be difficult. I just wanted to, to get my way. I just wanted to throw a fit, whatever it was. 
and then this person instead is coming back at them so severely that a fear is generated that while I was talking about doing this, this person might actually do it, thereby causing that person to submit. So now we've talked about two different ways, right? One where you submit, you take and deflate their arguments to the point that they don't really get anything out of you anymore. What they were trying to get out of you is not there. To the opposite, actually inflating the situation and meeting their bluff or potential bluff with your own seriousness and the fact that you're not gonna mess around with this and, and you're ready for it. And having that cause them to submit and deflate instead. In both situations, somebody was up, somebody else deflated to deal with it. Only in the second situation, you went up forcing them to deflate. Now, all of that said, realize that each of these situations has their place. And these places are not equal. If I'm in a place that deflating is gonna deal with it, then rising might actually be the thing that throws gas on the fire. The opposite can be true as well. If I'm in a situation where inflating is the answer, then deflating might just add fuel to the fire and, and spur on the situation because now they feel like they can get away with it. They were testing the waters and now because I've deflated, I've created a situation where they feel confident that they'll win. Bad guys want situations where they win. They don't, they don't want to fight, they don't want to challenge, they want to win. And these are just two, two different ways that situations can go. Each of them though, like, like a fire, I'll, I'll go back to that analogy. When you have a fire, you can stamp it out and you can deprive it until it, until it becomes less of a fire, until it's no fire at all. Or you can continue to add fuel, literal fuel, oxygen, all the things that make fires get bigger and more ferocious and more dangerous. And what you choose based on what you interpret, what you perceive and what you decide to do determines is this fire being squelched or instead is it being fueled and it's just gonna get bigger and more dangerous and you might get hurt. The people around you might get hurt. The people around them might get hurt and you have to understand these things. This is why understanding violence is so important. I'll throw a video here that I did recently reviewing a realities of violence course by Randy King that talks about the different types of violence. And that's a really important thing and I should be clear. The, the video doesn't talk about types of violence. The video reviews the course and the course was about the types of violence. And that was the most beautiful thing that came out of that course was a better understanding of the types of violence, which dictate what your methods of de-escalation or escape look like. And you've got to read that correctly because whether you stamp the fire or whether you feel the fire, what you do has a consequence. Sometimes meeting violence with violence is the answer. Sometimes meeting violence with violence will get you killed. Sometimes meeting violence with violence will get other people hurt. And the opposite is true. Sometimes meeting violence with submission will be the thing that gets people hurt, will be the thing that gets you hurt. And sometimes neither of those are the answer. Sometimes there are other things that make more sense. Sometimes it's time to actually become physical and de-escalation is not an option. Sometimes escape and avoidance is the better option. Each of these things have their own context and their own potential and their own percentage of success. So what do you think? Have you been in situations like this where escalating the situation brought it to a close or submitting to the situation brought it to a close or other things? Drop them in the comments. I wanna hear about situations that, that you have been in or been aware of, you know, people you know have been in and how that went and did it go the way that you thought it was gonna go or did it create more problems? I truly feel that keeping yourself safe is a process of understanding how situations could go wrong, not understanding how to make a situation. That's it for today. If you like this video, if it had value to you, be sure to share it, like it, do all of that kind of stuff. If you're new here and wanna subscribe, you can do that right here. Catch another playlist of videos like this right here and a couple more that you might like right here. I'm Ken, this is Kenfu TV, and I'll catch you in the next one.